Welcome back, Akron fans, to another replay cast. This time we're going to be on Imperium. And for those of you who don't know, Imperium, this is a map that we have not seen in a very long time. It's one of the maps by Meryl Vingian, actually. He was a really active community member up until about a year ago now. He was the guy who started the Temporal Anomalies tournament, and he did a lot of map making work as well. He also pioneered this resource paradigm with the boxes spaced out far enough that you could have resource processors in between a liquid crystal and cube plasma box allowing you to switch between them effortlessly. Which is a very interesting style, and also just the general... I'm not 100% sure how to ask Ivern about this, but I think the Cold Forge style, which is very popular nowadays for resource processors and resource crates, was partly inspired by this style, the spacing of it and everything. Beforehand, it was just line-based resources. All the crates were just in a line, trying to prevent the RPs from being built all around them. But this one spaces them out, so you can have RPs in between crates. So, this is Galdor vs. Jericho, and Galdor is a newer player. I believe this is the second or third game. Might be further in. He, going for standard 3RP and importer, so he clearly has played a bit. Most new players will not go through it that quickly. Jericho, on the other hand, going for fairly quick economy. However, he is taking advantage of being in between the crates. Granted, he's in between liquid crystal crates, so it's actually not helping too much. But at least it needs to move less when he runs out of resources. So, getting his base economy going, his Arcticus up in front. And beyond this, not really much to say, because Galdra is setting up his stuff, he's setting up his scouting forces, double checking, I guess. I'm not sure if he's aware of where the star points are. He does have a special ops going towards Jericho's base, and that is the right choice for scouting. One of his marines going to the north. I'm, he might be scouting, he might be trying to expand, and the other marine going towards the southeast. It's not entirely clear looking at the map where the star positions are, so I can't say I blame him for doing this, but he. It's actually not a bad idea overall, just because it does mean his marines are going to be in a good position to expand. Just take these expansions in a bit of a hidden, sneaky way, which is always a good thing to do. If you can take stuff sneakily, your opponent doesn't know it, they're not going to try to stop you for it, so you get free money. It's always good. Probably going to be building another marine as well. There we go, there's a marine coming up, because otherwise he wouldn't be just sending those marines like that. Probably going to be building a few marines and a few special ops. As I mentioned before, it's very common for newer players to build up just the early infantry and get factories later on. It's a familiar thing that's there. I, I did ask in my last video why people do that, and the answer I got was basically because that's what you see, which is what I expected, but it's good to know that is not just my suspicions, that most players are just saying, well, I see this, I see what I have here, and I know I can build this stuff. But, yeah. Important tip for CISO is factories are very useful, if not absolutely necessary for play. Now, infantry are actually, they got buffed a fair bit in terms of strength in the last patch, but still, especially against Grekum, you really want to have some, AT against everyone, you want to have ATHCs. Or Lancers, they work well too, but ATHCs are great. They're a really wonderful unit, even though they don't have Cloak anymore, they're still a very useful unit, very strong. And Lancers, of course, are also good, especially against early Octos like this, because Octos can't hit air. And Lancers just fly around everywhere, just being annoying and killing everything. Of course, Seppies are also fairly cheap, and can be used to counter it, but if they are building a bunch of Seppies, then you have to worry about them building a bunch of Octos, and then your base is mostly safe. So it works out that way. Anyway, Galdra back at the 52nd mark, probably trying to figure out what to do to f deal with that Octo, likely keeping his Marines closer to his base. Because if he keeps his Marines in his base and builds a third Marine, he'll be able to take care of that Octo no problem. Like, they'll just destroy it before it gets even close. But with one Marine, not enough. Sending a Special Op back as well, so he is going to be defending at least with one Marine and Special Ops, or two Marines and Special Ops once he builds that Marine. But I really, really would recommend building a factory very soon. Back at the 414 mark, he does see that the Octo is dealing a lot of damage. He really only has until the 213 mark to deal with this, which is about 15 seconds up from where he is now. The blue time of likely carrying along, there we go, carrying along the Special Ops and two Marines, so he should be able to defend. But it is going to be a bit tight, assuming Jericoon doesn't push more Octos in, but I think Jericoon is really just scouting at this point. He's not likely to be just going for this to try to kill everything. Just for basic scouting, making sure that everything is pretty reasonable, seeing what Galadar is going on, and then later on going for a kill blow, but probably not initially. And there we go, Galadar, we just saw the very tail end of him killing off that Octo and saving all of his units, so he doesn't end up losing anything. Nicely done, JR Kuhn, however, back at the unplayable past. He might be sending in more Octos. No, he's not, he's in fact echoing out that attack entirely, turning it into a resource processor. And he's going for the sneaky expansion rather than Galdor. However, Galdor does have a decent defense at this point, so... Only weakness, like I said, is he is building too much infantry. I, I really do not recommend building this much infantry. Ever. I have seen it work once against Zion Pulsers, and against Zion Pulsers is not a bad defense. 
but against Grekim, it's really risky. Because Octos will just tear him to shreds if Jericho builds enough Octos. Right now, Jericho, however, not building a whole lot of economy. He was... He had built, further in the future, a bunch of Seppies. We're at the 244 mark, and at the 444 mark, he had built some Seppies. And double check here. Yes, he built them to Reef, so nothing too major. His economy is fairly healthy back up here. Six RPs. Two of them on... Yeah, two of them on Q-Plasma. So fairly healthy, not particularly notable. And Galdor hasn't gone further this far in the future yet. He is focusing much more in the past, building up a lot of infantry. I'm not sure he's going to go for an attack with this. going to try to keep defending. Really should be going for attack. He does actually have some sneaky RPs, though, and a sneaky armory. Another armory. Like, really, it's the factory. It's it's right next to the armory. Hmm. You know, maybe we should, we should reconsider the ordering of this. The armory maybe should be to the left of the factory, because it doesn't make it clear that the factory is more important than the armory. Anyone watching on YouTube, if you can comment on what you think about that idea, that would be useful. Because changing the order around of this, I'm pretty sure is trivial. So, if that would make it easier to know that factory is more important than armory, and you want to build that, you want to progress to factory, then that, that can be done without any issue. But yeah, armories are pretty much only useful for tech in practice. And infantry, while somewhat useful, tend to have such a major speed and range disadvantage that it doesn't help them. However, with this much infantry, you know, Galdor might actually be able to pull this off. I think Jericoon may not be prepared for this sort of attack. He doesn't have a lot of defense. He does have a lot of reefs, but he doesn't have a lot of other defenses. And like I said, infantry do have a lot of attack power. They just don't have a lot of health or speed or range, which means against higher tech units, they tend to fall apart. But Jericho doesn't have any military. So this actually just might work. And here's that first factory. So the factory coming in at 650 mark. But yeah, this factory should really be built earlier on. And typically, what you'll see what most players do is they'll build three RPs, importer, and then factory with the next 70 LC they get. And that's how it's typically done. So yeah, you want to build a factory early on. Any later, and you really are... I think Jericoon is probably going easy on Galdor at this point. But any later than that, and you are really risking falling apart. Especially against Vekir. Because Zion Pulsar's coming in, and they just wreck everything. Although, like I said, enough infantry will be able to take care of one or two Zion Pulsars, but once they get to three or four or higher, then no amount of infantry is going to stop them. Yeah, also... For the UI thing, I'm thinking... Actually, it's sort of colored. There is some color to it, so it is kind of visible. But anyway, regardless, the infantry attack is coming in, and it's at the present, though, so Jericho has plenty of time to deal with this, but is able to take care of one of the progenerating forces... Actually, two of the progenerating units here. It's actually dealing a lot of damage, tearing apart everything. There's... Wow, Jericho further in the future, losing everything, but Jericho going back, getting a Pharopod, getting an Octopod... And able to take care of the infantry, no problem. This is what I was talking about with infantry being actually not totally useless, come to think of it, because special ops can detect cloaked units. However, two octopods, I mean, the pharopod not able to handle it, but the octopods are basically built to destroy infantry. Like, infantry do not do anything against octopods. And being that it was attacking the Arcticus as opposed to, say, one of the reefs, that's really painful. And of course, we have two. That resource processor is right there. That's also pretty painful. But just the fact that he's not able to get rid of those. But still, able to... Well, able to threaten a Pharopod at least. If not destroy it entirely. But these Octopods are dealing way too much damage for it to be effective. I don't know if Galdras... He is changing around his tactics, but... Well, it will stop him from attacking the Arcticus. That is good. This is a good thing to do. But like I said, his main problem is the fact that he only just now built factors. And he needs to start building, he needs to get machinery, he needs to be getting units. And he's getting Lancers, not a bad idea. Like I said, Lancers are pretty useful. They're, at this stage in the game, it might be a bit too late to make them that useful. Just because Octopods are effective against air, and Sepipods can be coming up at will. Jr. can just build them if he wants to. He doesn't have the money right now, but, let's see, back to 752 mark. Well, he really could just change up his builder if he wants to. If it becomes a problem, you just get Sepipods instead of Octopods. And even, like I said, the Octopods do quite well against air. And Lancers without the aerospace upgrade do not do well against ground. And Galdor also getting the ground units upgrade, so definitely focused on this infantry-based strategy. And 
like I said, it's just not a particularly useful strategy in practice. It's a neat strategy, certainly. I kind of wish it was a bit more useful, but it's just for more options. But it, at this stage in the game, it isn't. It's, as I mentioned before, more of a late game strategy. It's something to do it... It's something you got to do right at the... Oh, like 15, 20 minute mark if you have gate tech. But the games rarely get to that point anymore, so it's not likely to happen. But if it does happen, it's a good strategy to have up your sleeve. And Lancer coming in here, so we have one Lancer, another Lancer is... No, actually, another mech being built. Not sure if Galdor is planning on teching up to Macrofab, or if he just wanted to build that because of lack of... No, he has plenty of reserves, so that's not the problem. And Jericho going for a counterattack, however, Jericho is building up with... Wow, a Marine going trying to build an armory, a proxy armory, but it'll be intercepted, as will everything else. I think Galdra is aware of this happening, though. Yes, Galdra has had that given away. Jericho is expanding at the same time. Very nicely done. Always what you want to do when attacking is to expand during that attack, because attacks provide a great screen for it. I don't know if he's aware of Galdra's base, though. Galdra having built up quite a lot in this east side base. Main base essentially being completely abandoned, except for the... The importers, however, are important, but he has a ton of importers. He's building importers exactly the way that I intended them to be built when I proposed the three reserve change. I think capacity changing to three rather than ten. Be having lots of importers. Because it makes it easier to knock them down. But it also makes it actually a bit more resilient. Like, they're less central, but at the same time, you do have some reserves. You can't just build them off to the side and still have some reserves. It's just, you aren't going to have this one importer with ten reserves that's doing all you need to do. Or two importers in the center of your base, surrounded by all your buildings. You're going to actually have to take some space in order to build enough importers to be able to build a lot of units at once. And this is that Lancer that was coming up. Well, actually, no, it's the second Lancer. It's got to be a second Lancer. Yes, here's the first Lancer. So a second Lancer is coming up, and the mech that came up... I think he might be trying to use that as an anti-air force against this... Well, not going to do too much good. Against the Pharopod here. Unfortunately, no detection at this point in time, at that point in space. Because if he had some, that would have been just death. That would have been perfect. But he doesn't, so... He does, however, have some here, and that should be able to take care of that Pharopod without any issue. Yep, the second Special Ops able to stay alive and tear the Pharopod to shreds. So more Lancers coming, however, I would definitely recommend Tornads. You really need to get machinery and get Tornads if he's going to be fighting a lot of Pharopods. And then the set Lancers, enough of them should be able to deal with the Sepipods without too much issue, but the Pharopods are the real concern right now because they are being built. As are the Octopods, and Tornads being bombers are able to take care of them pretty well. But nope, Galdra does not seem to be wanting to build any additional tech, and Jericho only building his advanced structures. However, it looks like Jericho has gone for an assault and getting destroyed by Lancers, however. Jericho, from his point of view, we do not see anything special. And Galdra is jumping back to when this attack started, so the Octopods were coming in here and dealing a fair amount of damage. And no, it looks like Jericho actually moved around his power pod, had saved it initially, but he's getting flanked by infantry, not really doing too much good, but it is distracting the forces long enough for the Lancers to get in here and be built. So I should be able to defend it, but it looks like... No! Galdra does not have his Lancers in position, sending him in one at a time. That's the easiest way to get them all killed. So unfortunately, not able to defend as effectively as he had that first pass. And this is at the Unplayable Pass to Edge, so there's really nothing he can do about this. However, ultimately it looks like he will be able to defend losing one of his armories. Not the biggest deal. I don't think he was researching any tech there. I didn't see any tech research. But it's still a bit of a blow. And Jericho, of course, knows about this base, so he can start doing stuff, anything he really wants to it. And Galdra wisely going for a counterattack at this point, but losing all of his Lancers, the Octopods being healed up by the Reefs, and the Reefs kind of getting low on energy, but with three Reefs, it's going to take a while to, to knock that down. And like I said, Lancers are not great against ground. You need Aerospace in order to make them good against ground, and a better, more cost-effective option for the most part is Tornads. The only reason to get Aerospace is if you had a bunch of Lancers, which he is getting, but even then, you need a lot of money to support it. And you also need machinery in order to get aerospace, so getting machinery gets you Tornads. Thus, really, get machinery. There is no reason to not get the early techs that you can get for any species. Except maybe auto defense. Auto defense is maybe questionable. That We're not sure about auto defense, but we're definitely sure about advanced structures and machinery. Those two are very useful. Do not underestimate them at all, ever. And Galdra, right now, the 11 6 mark, not really doing too much more with his lance. He's just stocking up, while J-Raccoon is getting a counterattack going and getting chronoporting. He just wants to end this from the looks of it, because chronoporting with all these units is just going to be death. There's no way that Galdra's going to be able to take care of all this. And Galdra not really 
Well, getting machinery now, finally. But if he's going to get Tornads, now is the only time. And even then, Chronoporting is going to make this absolutely impossible. And the force coming from Jericho's point of view, the 1351 mark, dealing with one of the factories, getting rid of the Lancers. Far was able to take care of the Lancers, no problem, even though the Octopods may not be quite so effective. And of course, that's saying very little. The Octopods are actually very effective against air relative to what people might expect being at their anti-ground unit. And given that Lancers are not particularly strong against ground, Octopods are only slightly weak against air, but definitely have a lot more HP, so they can tank whatever the Lancers throw at them. The only, Lancers, the only advantage Lancers really having is the splash damage, and that's clearly not helping out too much in this case, the Lancers having come in one at a time. Not sure why, but like I said, Galatra is a bit of a newer player, so it does take some getting used to to group all your units and send them in. And actually, wait, no, I am sure why. He's low on Chrono Energy, and he hadn't been hierarchying up his units. And there goes J Raccoon's Chrono Ports. And Jericho confirmed in the future with his Sevi Pods as well, coming and tearing everything apart. And it looks like... Yeah, well, having Chronoported, that changes things, but... Not sure if Galdra is aware of what's exactly going on. He definitely sees the damage coming in further in the past, but that's just because... That's when the Chronoports occurred, and here we go. Here are the Chronocloned Octopods... Tearing apart everything. Just... There's nothing really Galdra can do at this point. He does have his main base still alive. He is getting machinery. He does have a second hidden base, with two more factories being built up. But really, he needed machinery about eight or nine minutes ago. Like, chronally, eight or nine, I got the four or five minute mark at the latest. There's no reason to be getting it at the 13 minute mark. And there goes. Tornods are available. He is not building them over. I do not know why he's not building them. He might have been trying to go from machinery to aerospace, but he cannot afford aerospace right now. I really don't know what he's planning on doing. Tornados, however, although expensive, would be useful. Tanks even would actually be useful at this point for the amount of LC he has, just as an LC sink. But nope, not going for that. And it looks like Jaracoon just tearing everything apart. What's left with the Sebi Pods? Can't see his Octopods yet, but it's probably because the Octopods have not quite propagated forward yet. Galdra, further in the past, the 1432 mark, does see his entire hidden base has been destroyed while the Octopods chronoport back, completing that loop. But there are no Tornads coming in, and using a lot of QP on these Lancers. Because Lancers are a really big Q-Plasma sink. And, okay, right now Tornads would be a bad idea, just because of this. But Tanks would not be. Tanks would have actually been a really good idea. However, it is too late now. There is really not much that Galdra can do, given his current position, given what he has built up. Other than maybe spamming Tanks, that's about the only thing that comes to mind. And even then, that's pretty risky. It works against the Sepipods, but won't likely help against these here, so... Yeah, Galdra surrenders, and that is the game. And unfortunately, that's also all the games I have for tonight. Because, really, people aren't uploading the replays to Game Replays. When people play games, they got to upload it to Game Replays. Because that's where I get these replays from, in order to do casts. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And hope that was educational for any new players out there who want to play CISO. Armory is not really your friend. Factories are your friends. Macrofabs, which you didn't actually see this game, are your friends. Importers are kind of your friends, but don't worry about building too many. You only need two or three, assuming you're not getting attacked directly. And infantry don't work especially well, except in very... There are strategies that make them work, but they're usually fairly late game, or they're surprising. But typically, if you're just starting out, go with the safe route, and just go with factories, ATHCs, maybe some lances, but mostly ATHCs, into Martanks. That's typically what works best. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that once again, and have a good night, everybody.